Okay, so I just want to show everybody a quick uh, video on setting up your dome so everything lines up correctly. There's a lot of questions about these dome settings in the AppsCom dome menu. Basically, you call it the dome, dome control panel. You hit the setup button. This is what comes up. Now, the first couple, I'm sorry about the sun changing here. Let me turn this up a little. Um, now obviously, you're, you're Latin long. You can only enter the first number, so you got to round uh, to the closest. I am just slightly closer to 40 than I am to 41, and the same with minus 76. Now, the radius of the dome in inches, that is the distance from one edge of the dome rotation to the center of your mount, wherever you want to call center. Um, mine ended up being roughly 40 inches. Now, you can play with that number because mine, I don't think anybody's going to have a perfectly round dome. It's really hard to do. Mine varies from about 41 to 39. I put 40 Hello. in. Hi, I'm on the video. <laughs> I'm recording a video. I'll talk to you in a minute. It was my wife. <laughs> I said I'm, t I'm recording a video on setting up the dome. I'll talk to you in a minute. <laughs> yes. Don't worry, I've got to go back to work. Okay. okay. Bye. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so where was I? Oh, okay, the radius of the dome. Um, one thing you want to be certain about, don't be worried about moving these numbers uh, an inch or two in either direction and testing it. You test it by moving your scope all the way to the west, all the way to the east, all the way to the north, and all the way to the south, and making sure the dome stays center with the shutter. The shutter stays center with the telescope, I should say. Okay, and then the same thing with these other ones. Come on, focus. Distance from the dome center of the scope to the pivot point. This is the east and west. Now I'm this is where mine is a little ovalized, just a little bit. It's uh, about 39 inches one direction and 41 the other. I ended up setting that to starting it with minus two and testing going again going with the scope east and west, north and south, just to make sure. And I ended up settling with minus one. That put things right in the center. But again, don't feel don't be afraid to play with those numbers. Distance to the center of the dome, north and south, and that's the same. Um, by the way, the east-west pivot affects how the shutter lines up when you're facing east and west. So if you do what I did here, point the scope towards the west, and you find the shutter off too, si too far one direction, move that east-west number and wait till the dome centers and then you'll be where you need to be and that's where you put that number same for the north and south you want to face the dome north make sure the dome is uh, shutters in the center of the scope and move those numbers around i ended up ending up with a number two the two inches that seemed to work really well for me um height of the pivot point above the dome equator very easy Again, the dome equator is the track. You bring your hand over, and this is going to be really rough, but the, the equator comes out to about here on my scope. The center of my access point is somewhere right here. So there you see you have three or four inches, and again, I played with that number. I didn't measure it, uh, but I'm just using my hand now. And what did I end up with? Three inches. So plus three inches if it's north. Um, or above. And in most cases, I would say it would be above. But if it's below, then it would be a minus number. And again, the last number, this one kind of got me, threw me a curveball. Distance from the mount pivot to the telescope optical axis in inches. Now, I, I'm going to get over here. I originally measured this, and I'm not facing the scope in a very good direction to do this. 
can get some of my measuring tape out here a little bit. I originally measured this to my Orion scope and down, and I came up with about 11 or 10 inches north, uh, which is a positive number in that. But that wasn't really accurate because that completely eliminated my red cap. And I ended up being centered with this scope and pushing the limits on my red cat where it would be very close to the edge of the shutter. So I split the difference, put it in between the two, came up with 14 inches, tested it all around, went north, south, east, west, and that seemed to work pretty well. So I hope that helps you a little bit on setting up dome control. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to park the scope here. Um, seems to work pretty well. Um, I'm doing all this, by the way, through a sequence generator. It does a pretty good dome control, but uh, I still might play with some of the settings in here, but I think I finally got it where I need it. And as you can see, the dome does a pretty good job of staying with it. Obviously, you have to let it settle a little bit. And it does seem to run. I don't know if it doesn't want to overheat the motor or what, but it seems to run for five, ten seconds and then shut off and then turn back on. But it keeps up pretty well. And that's it. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to put them in the, the comment section. Otherwise, I will record the next time I, I do... Uh, an observation, uh, run through everything for you. Um, again, I have done it a couple times, but I had some issues and it would have made for a really long video. So we'll, we'll go with the next time and hope everything works out <laughs> real good. It is kind of tricky. The first night I did it, and, and we had four, three or four nights of clear weather in a row, which was just amazing. I was shocked. The first night, I got done setting up everything and did the heart nebula for about, I started about 11.30 at night, so it took me quite a while. The next night was about 10, because I'm getting the hang of it, and the next night I was in the house about 9.30, or actually earlier than about 8.30, so I am getting the hang of it and getting things to work better, so I'll, we'll record the next time. And if you like these videos, feel free to subscribe, and you have a good day. Bye.